Thank you for keeping faith with us on news night. The Kremlin has forged a deal with Wagner Group boss uh, Yegni uh, Pyongyang to defuse the mercenary group's uprising. In exchange for his exile to Belarus, uh, the mercenary leader won't be prosecuted, the Associated Press reported, citing a Kremlin spokesperson. The reported agreement comes after a paramilitary uh, rebellion on Saturday in which the Wagner Group marched across Russia before suddenly uh, turning around just 120 miles from Moscow. Uh, Prizohin says he didn't want to shed Russian blood. Kremlin spokesman uh, Dmitry uh, Peskov announced that uh, Pigohim and the troops who follow him will not face criminal prosecution as part of the deal. He also says those troops who did not join in the uprising will be offered defense ministry contracts. Saturday's rebellion marked the strongest threat to President Vladimir Putin's power in over 20 years. Meanwhile, Wagner boss, uh, he gave me uh, Prigozhin, has just published a new audio recording claiming he was turning his forces around from a march towards Moscow. The announcement comes as the Belarusian government claimed President Alexander uh, Lukashenko had reached a deal with Wagner boss to hold the march of his forces on Moscow. According to a statement, Russian President Vladimir Putin uh, briefed his Belarusian counterpart on the situation in southern Russia with a private military company. In the meantime, the situation in Russia is getting more complicated and the situation, if not checked promptly, may uh, degenerate but let's bring an international security analyst who is a certified anti-terrorism specialist and is the African representative of the Global Anti-Terrorism Accreditation Board, David Otto. David, thank you for joining us on Newsnight. Thank you for having me. Ah, well, <laughs> uh, it, it begins to bother you when yeah. a paramilitary group is being, quote-unquote, sponsored by the government to kill rape, maim, and do all sorts of dirty jobs for the, for the government. Where does the integrity of the government stand in all of this? I think that's a very good question, and, and I'm sure you're referring to the uh, private military contractors known as Wagner, um, Absolutely. which we're talking about. Um, but first of all, I think you know, it's important to note that in terms of geopolitics, you mm -hmm. know, um, most powerful countries do have uh, some sort of uh, private military contractors. Absolutely. Now, it all depends on how much visibility uh, that, you know, they do have. In, in the case of uh, Russia, uh, we know that the Wagner Group is quite visible. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, uh, the Russian foreign uh, military policy uh, relies largely um, on, on Wagner, especially when we talk about deployment in, in the Middle East in countries like Libya, um, in, in Africa, South uh, Sudan, mm -hmm. you've got um, you know, Wagner military groups in Mali. Um, you, you also have them in countries like Mozambique. Um, so um, this is, you know, part of, you know, Putin's, um, you know, kind of, you know, when you have a private military uh, contractor, you simply pay them. You're, the responsibility uh, becomes a lot more diminished in terms of, you know, as opposed to you sending your, um, you know, your regular troops, you know, to foreign countries. So, um, you know, this is, this is something which is quite common, um, especially with the big countries. But, you know, in the case of Russia, um, Wagner has been in the front of most of its uh, foreign policy. We've seen them uh, taking uh, swords of land uh, in Ukraine, um, you know, Bakhmut being the latest. And we've also see, seen the, um, the recent mutiny, which, you know, has shaken uh, the, the power structures. Uh, you know, I suppose, uh, of Moscow. Um, but, you know, there is some sort of a resolution, uh, as you quietly, um, as you rightly mentioned in your, in your introduction. Um, and, and I think that um, uh, we're looking at, you know, what happens next and what are the possible impacts, perhaps. Okay, now, before we go to the impact, uh, it was during the Donbass war in Ukraine that the Wagner Group became very prominent. And now, um, so let, let's, let's talk about the, the impact of uh, what uh, Russia is using the group to achieve. I mean, it's quite simple. Um, you know, if you have a private military contractor, 
you simply pay them and you know you you give them the instructions you know especially as someone like Liv Jenif uh, Prigovin mm -hmm. who is the head of uh, uh, the Wagner group this is somebody who is quite close to to Putin um, you give them instructions and they carry out um, their machinery activities um, again as I said it's not new you know um, using uh, private military contractors um, Nigeria has had an experience in that you know uh, the US you know has used um, you know private militaries in the form of uh, uh, the Mujahideen so, you know that led to uh, Osama bin Laden's um, uh, coming up as a global terrorist uh, um, you know uh, one most wanted terrorist in the world so it is not strange uh, Putin is using Wagner to fight its fight you know to then reduce uh, the, the amount of um, backlash, you know, if you do have your regular forces fighting in the, in the war front, the more people complain about, you know, the morale of the forces, the more you lose forces in the war front, the more it, you know, you have domestic um, challenges. But if you do use private military contractors, you know, um, the responsibility is almost not there. Okay, in, in, the, so. in, the, in, the, in the Russia's invasion of Ukraine, uh, the Wagner is also being used and what they're doing is they're taking inmates they're using inmates to invade Ukraine. Uh, what does this do mm. to the uh, personalities of the inmates and their reformation attempt? Well, this is uh, clearly an individual's question. You know, um, you know, uh, every uh, you know missionary would have a different experience in terms of their psychological um, you know uh, experience. You know, if they've been deployed. Um, but of course, you know, the reason why I think someone like Putin would, you know, uh, prefer to use or perhaps, you know, the, uh, the Wagner boss, you know, uh, Prigovin would decide to use, uh, you know, inmates is because, of course, um, they have very little to lose. Um, and again, it then avoids, you know, a situation where Russia would then deploy its own regular forces that it has spent a lot of money uh, to train them. So it's a simple mathematics in terms of how you know countries like Russia do rely on these paramilitary uh, you know a private military contractor so again I don't think you know there is a lot of um, uh, you know attention or care by the Russian government you know uh, you know regarding the the well-being or the sources of um, you know uh, these fighters but clearly um, the, the aim behind this is to ensure that um, there is some level of deniability in terms of Russians Russians involvement uh, but but also um, it kind of preserves uh, the Russian regular forces from being confronted with uh, uh, with this kind of war. But mind you, Russia has got more than one million, um, you know, military forces. They've deployed a huge number, you know, in the war front. The Wagner Group is just twenty-five thousand or, or, or less, depending on where you look at. So again, even though they're using these uh, private military contractors, Russia still has a huge number of its regular forces deployed uh, to Ukraine. Prigovin um, had also denied, the founder of, of Wagner, had also denied <laughs> several times uh, his involvement with, with Wagner. Only recently uh, did he own up yes. to his involvement with the Wagner. So you, th doesn't that bother you uh, mm. that you know, they, they've, they've been using the group, has been using inmates, and yet the founder... Uh, has had been denying his involvement with the group. I'm, I'm more particular, and I wanted to come back and address this. I'm more particular about the psyche and the reformation attempt of the inmates they're using. Imagine you starting a group and then using inmates to, for the functionalities of the group, and then you're denying the group. I mean, uh, do you suspect any sharp practices there? Uh, of, of course. I mean, this is um, war for money or money for war. Um, you know, when these inmates are being used, um, you know, the, it's, it's a give and take. You know, you, you, you come on board, um, you're paid for, um, you know, getting trained and, you know, getting involved in a war rather than sitting in, in a prison uh, uh, and rot, perhaps. Um, but in terms of war, there is no mor morality. Um, when war breaks out, um, you know, everything, you know, gets uh, swept uh, under the table. So I think what is important uh, is to understand that, um, you know, private military contractors have always been um, used um, covertly or overtly by powerful states, you know, to, you know, either, you know, fight proxy wars. Um, you know, we've seen so many cases, you know, um, of uh, similar nature. But I think what is more, um, you know, concerning about the current, uh, you know, Russian model is that, again, as you mentioned, Wagner has always denied uh, because he's not registered anywhere um, as a private military contractor. So that level of deniability is the strength of, of the movement. But 
now we know the group does exist. You know, Russia has now, you know, um, made it you know, openly clear that, you know, there is such a group. Um, we've seen what has happened in the past uh, 24 hours. But perhaps I think this is all about, you know, some, you know, statecraft, you know, between the, um, you know, Prigozhin himself. Uh, possibly uh, to talk about issues of power control, um, you know, within the battlefield, uh, who has more uh, command, you know, and, and issues of, you know, con contractual issues. Uh, I believe that what we're experiencing is perhaps also um, a possibility that maybe Putin wants to clean up uh, his senior military leadership and he's looking for someone to uh, help him do that. So Prigovin comes in and points out the incompetence of some of the generals. Um, he gets uh, a mutiny, Putin takes out the generals, and, you know, he goes back to the battlefield. So it's much more complicated than Mr. I. <laughs> um, you, you know, uh, uh, well, I must thank you very much, David Otto, for coming on Newsnight. <laughs> uh, as I let you go, I I'm just beginning to think again about the consequences of all of this on the receiving end, Ukraine. Uh, we only hope that sooner than later, something better than uh, invasion will happen to Ukraine. Of course. And Ukraine will be able to uh, stand up for itself. And it's a big lesson as well to African countries, oh. uh, where you know, um, uh, any government would want to rely on a private military contractor. We saw the likes of Asari Dakubo talking about um, his mm -hmm. own private military mm. contractors you know, are ready to um, you know, kind of uh, work with the government of President Tunebu. So it's, it's a clear example of you know, what not to do. A clear example of what not to do coming from David Otto. Thank you very much uh, indeed for coming on Newsnight.